Hi everyone, this video tutorial we are going to do these few items. So we are going to develop a Node.js app to connect to AWS relational database services. And we are going to use MySQL. And uh, I know that uh, sometimes the more popular database will be one of NoSQL. So we are also going to develop the same Node.js application to connect to a NoSQL and we are going to use the AWS DynamoDB. Then we are going to spin up an AWS EC2 instance, after which we are going to deploy the Node.js web app onto the EC2 instance. And then we are going to uh, get a customized domain name and we are going to point that domain name uh, using the DNS address record to point to the EC2 instance. After which, uh, we are going to force our web app to be served using only HTTP secure, uh, which means that we need to get some leg legitimate certificate for the HTTPS. All right. So uh, we shall begin with uh, creating a RDS, a AWS RDS. So we are going to use MySQL. Right. So this is my AWS, right? So I'm going to just type RDS. Okay, so this is the one relational database service. So uh, most of the services are free for one year if you sign up with AWS. So currently, uh, I'm in the US East one, okay? So I'm using the resources from US East North Virginia. So I'm going to uh, choose create database. Yeah, okay, so create database. So there are a few offerings, right? So these are the various relational database that you can choose. So I'm going to choose MySQL, all right? And then, uh, yeah, just make sure that you are choosing this one, the free tier, so that you don't have to spend any money. And uh, the name of my database will be movie underscore review. Okay, and I'm going to put in a password. AWS one two three four five. AWS one two three four five. All right. So I'm I'm going to keep the rest as default. And uh, we will want to use MySQL Workbench to connect to this database. So I'm going to choose yes. Okay. So if you put no, then basically your your database will only be accessible within amazon all right so click yes all right and then uh yeah so over here you can you can create a new vpc right basically uh one of the port that is going to open for you will be 3306 right so i'm going to just choose the this default one password authentication okay so this is the cost okay but ours will, will be free because of the free tier plan okay so we are going to cl uh, click create database ah, okay so here say uh, must okay so cannot have mm, underscore all right so I'm going to put um, movie DB then, right? All right. So this is going to take some time, right? So now the status is creating. Okay. So now the 
database is ready so we can click into it and this is the endpoint which we need it for the workbench okay so this is my workbench so click a new connection let's call it AWS let's copy this endpoint okay the username is admin and press OK okay let's connect to the database and key in the password so my password is AWS 12345 Okay, so we are inside the MySQL database. So uh, you can basically go on to create your own database. Okay, and also create the tables and all the various fields. So to uh, expedite things, right? So I'm going to paste in some SQL script. I will also leave the script. Uh, in the description for you to use uh, basically it is to uh, drop database if such a database exists and to create database to use the database and then drop table if it exists and to create a table called shows and it's going to have three column id right which is uh, <coughs> primary key uh, and then a name for the movie name bacha and review right and then insert in three records okay so let's run it okay right so it's running now okay let's refresh it Okay, something went wrong. Uh, what happened? Okay, let's clear it. Let's run again. Ah, okay, it's here now. Okay. So. Okay, so these are the three records. Okay, so we are done with the workbench. All right, so now that we have created the MySQL, so now we want to develop, develop a very simple Node.js project to connect to the RDS MySQL. All right, so uh, this is my map folder, so it's empty. So I'm going to just uh, initialize a Node.js project. So npm init. Okay, so I'm going to just press enter all the way. Alright, okay. And I will need to install the Node.js MySQL library. So npm install MySQL. Alright, so now this is one of the dependency. So let's create a, a server-side JavaScript. So new file, let's call it server.js. Alright, so var mysql equals to require mysql. Okay, var connection will be equals to mysql dot create connection right so host so I need to fill in the host later on and then 
and the port okay by default it will be 3306 user admin and then the password so mine is aws12345 and finally the database okay so let's take a look so the database the database is called uh, movie database all right movie database okay so i'm going to copy the endpoint which is this okay and put it here okay, yeah so i'm going to do a connection connection dot connect If okay, if there is an error, okay, so if there is an error, then I'm going to throw up the error. Else, I'm going to cons console dot log uh, connected. All right, so let's try. So, no server dot js. Okay, so we are facing. So, oh, okay. So the database, database. So database is actually movie underscore review. All right. So the, so this is the. <coughs> the name of the instant so it should be movie underscore review so let's try again good okay so everything is good so now uh, let's try to retrieve the records so var sql okay so here we are writing sql statement Select everything from the table is called shows and then connect connection dot query. Okay, so I'm going to run this SQL statement and then it's going to call this anonymous function. okay so let's try right so I'm able to get back all the three records all right so now we are going to move to the second item which is to uh, connect to a no SQL database Right, so let's go to AWS to create a Dynamo DB. Okay, so we can just search for Dynamo DB. Okay, so so just take note of your uh, Joe location. So I'm in US East one. So create table. Right. So I'm going to call this table the same thing. Movie underscore review. Okay. So my primary key will be ID. Uh, we do not need to have a sort key. And then yeah. So I'm going to just accept everything. Create table. okay so it is creating 
All right, so uh, it's been created. So let's click into this table here and then let's view the items. Okay, and let's create some items. Okay, some some documents. All right, so uh, we can create in the JSON format or you can choose the form format. All right, so the first item value will be one. So let's add a few more meaningful attribute. So string. So let's make it the same as the MySQL database. So there's a name view. So here I will just put some movie name, okay, end game. Okay, another one review okay great movie okay create one item all right so uh, we can also uh, use the JSON format if you think that is faster so you can go to edit go to the JSON copy this whole JSON here go back all right we create item so this time around we'll just paste so the second index will be two review will be lousy and then another movie uh, let's call it um, player two ready Okay, so we will just have these two record. Okay, and let's go back to our project. Okay, so uh, in order for us to connect to the NoSQL, uh, we will need to install a particular Node.js library known as the AWS SDK. Okay, so let's try to install that npm install aws sdk Okay, so at this point of time, uh, we will need to obtain the access key ID and also the secret access key of your AWS. All right, so uh, let me show you where to create the access key. So you can search for IM identity. Uh, Okay, so this is the identity authentication management. So click on it. And then, yeah, okay. And then click on my security credentials. Okay, so over here you can create the access key. So for testing, you know, uh, you should set this access key and uh, to be as liberal as possible. Okay, so just allow all the rights just for testing. And when it is for production, then probably you should just give it just enough sufficient rights. All right, so this is the access key. Okay, so after you've done that, so as you come back to, to here, right? And, and what you should do is create one file. Let's call it config. config.json. And over here, uh, let's put in the access key ID all right and then you can copy from your own AWS put in the string here 
and then the other one will be secret access okay in camera case okay okay and then the last one okay so it's a region us is dash one okay right so you just fill in the access key and the secret access key in the region we have tested with mysql so let's try to get some get the data from the uh, dynamo db from aws all right so let's create a constant aws is equals to require AWS dash SDK and then AWS dot config. All right. So we are going to read the credentials from our path, which is the config dot JSON document. Next. AWS dot config. So we are going to update the region because we have created the table in the east region. So US dash east dash one. Right. So that's the region. And then. Okay, so create an instance of the doc client, document client, new AWS doc dynamo db doc document client. Okay, so now doc client is the instance of this document client. So we're going to use the API to access the record or rather the documents. So var params. Okay, so here we are, we are setting the table name. Right, so the table name is movie underscore review. Next, dot client dot, we are using the API scan, right? So we pass in the params. Okay, and then error data so depending on whether is there error or we are getting the data okay so if error so we want to console.log the error okay otherwise else all we want is uh, we can create one array empty array and then let's do a loop for var i in data dot items okay and we are going to push them into an array okay, push them so id will be data items i bracket id okay comma okay so we can copy this whole chunk here for the next attribute it will be name so here will be name and then Let's copy this one. And then the last one will be review, and here will be review. Okay. After which we want to console.log the arrays. 
okay so let's try it. so All right, so uh, this is from MySQL, and we are getting uh, an empty array. So uh, realize my error. So this is so the attribute is items. So that is where all the documents are found inside these variables. Okay, so let me try again. Right. Okay. So we are able to get back. Uh, the two records from the DynamoDB. That's great. So uh, we are done with item one and two, right? Uh, maybe what we should do is we can use the Express framework and uh, to create two different endpoints so that we can see the two results in the web page. Okay, so let's do that. So now uh, let's go and install npm install express. Okay, var express is supposed to require express. And then var app is equals to an instant of express. So we are going to create two routes. So the first one uh, is slash mysql. So that's the first route. Okay, and then. Uh, we are using the get method so we are going to call this method from my sql okay and then let's copy this line the second one will be no sql all right and then we'll change the method later on so let's create a function for this one okay there should be two argument here request comma respond and what we can do is we can copy from over here okay let's copy from here and let's put inside here okay and then what we can do is we can just put respond dot send okay send back to the requester Okay, so app dot listen. So let us let's use port three thousand, and then console console dot log, and then let's put in the so three thousand, and then no. So let's run it. All right, so let's click on this one. So indeed, we are getting back the records from MySQL. So that's good. So let's proceed to work on this, the other endpoint. Okay, so we can copy this whole thing and here will be no, SQ, no SQL All right, so let's change the function name no SQL and what we can do is we can cut out this whole thing here and then pull it here and now we can just put respond dot send okay so looks good so let's terminate let's run it all 
Alright, so this is working. So let's change the URL to no escape. Yeah, okay, great, it's working. Okay, so now that our simple web app is able to connect to MySQL and also DynamoDB, which is a no SQL. So next thing is we want to spin up an AWS EC2 instant. Okay, so uh, again, this is under the free tier, so you do, don't have to spend uh, any cents on this. So let's go to EC2. EC2. And all right, so let's go to the dashboard and let's create one instant, right? So make sure you choose the one that has the free tier eligible label, all right? So uh, let's choose this one, okay? So this is a free tier, so it's running on the Amazon Linux 2 flavor. Okay, so uh, if you don't want to spend any money, then you choose this one, okay, t2.micro, which has one virtual CPU and only one gig of memory RAM, okay? So let's move on to configure instant. All right, okay, so uh, let's create a new VPC, all right, because uh, we will need to allow certain incoming ports okay because eventually this is going to be our our web server so create new okay so let's create a new one hmm hold on I think it's the okay it's all right so let's go with this one first and we can check the the incoming ports so I think we can just click review and launch okay so blah 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 security group yeah so you can see over here the security group is only allowing port 22 which is important for us to SSH okay but that's not enough so all right so we can launch first and over here uh, we can create a new key pair right so for me I will just use uh, okay so let's do it so create a new key pair and I'm going to call it uh, movie underscore review so download this key pair Okay, so make sure you uh, you know where is this file because you will need this file. Okay, then launch instances. Okay, so let's go back to our instances and take a look. Okay, so it's pending. So. Uh, let's check on the security group all right so under the security so this is the one okay so you can see the incoming there's only one port okay that's not enough so let's click into this security group okay and what we want to do is we want to edit the inbound rules okay so add one more rule so it will be uh, HTTP, which is port 80, and anywhere, okay, add one more. And the next one will be HTTPS, right, which is port 443, and also anywhere, all right. So save the rules, okay. So now let's go back to our instant and check it out. Yeah, 
Okay, so now it's running, right? So it's running. Okay, so you can see the 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 incoming. All right, yeah. So you can see the incoming now is eighty four four three. All right, so I want to introduce to you uh, a very good app. So this app is known as Mobile Xterm. All right, so it is a very uh, powerful application for us to do SSH and also SFTP and many other things. All right, so you can go and download this particular application. Alright, so I'm going to activate my mobile XTERM. Alright, so let's create a new session. SSH. So the remote host, we can get it from the details here. All right, so we can use this public address. So let's copy it. Okay, let's pull it in. And then let's specify a username. So by default, the Amazon Linux tool, the default username is ec2-user. Okay, then next, uh, we are going to use the private key so remember the private key that you have downloaded so let's go and look for the private key yeah okay so this is the one Okay, and we should be able to connect to it. Right, so now we are inside the EC2 instance. Right, so, uh, so this is the SSH terminal. Over here is the SFTP. Right, so, uh, so we are going to maybe create a folder here. So let's call it movie. Let's call it movie. Okay. So let's go into movie. Let's go back to our project. So let's right click and choose review in file explorer. Okay. And we are going to select this three file, right? So just pull it into just drill it into the folder okay and then let's do a npm let's cd into the movie and then uh, let's do a m yeah so we need to get node.js install so Let's do a sudo yum install curl. Hmm, okay, so it's already installed. Then the next one we want to okay, we want to point to the source for the Node.js and we are using version 14.x. Ah okay, so uh, we need to escalate our permission. So let's try with sudo. Okay, so let's try the user. So let's switch the user to the super user. And then let's try to. Okay, good. Okay, so let's try to change back to EC2 dash user. OK, 
Okay, so we are back. So let's try to install Node.js. Okay, yes. Yes. All right, so Node.js installed, so we can try out by typing Node. Okay, so it's working. It's version 14.18.2. So at this point, uh, we want to do an npm install, right? Because we have a few dependencies defined inside package.json, uh, namely the Express, MySQL, AWS dash SDK. Yeah. Okay, so npm install. Right, okay, so uh, we can, okay, so uh, let's try to run the program. Okay, so uh, of course we will not be able to use 127.0.0.0.1, right? So instead, uh, we have to go to our instance. Okay, and use this IP, right? Okay, so port 3000, MySQL. Okay, and okay, let's wait. And oh, okay, so we are trying to access via port 3000. So we need to make sure that we also allow the port. Okay, so at this moment, there's no 3000. So let's go to the security group and let's go and edit inbound rules. Okay, add one more rule. It will be uh, custom TCP 3000. Okay, allow all IP safe. All right, so let's run again. All right, so now we are getting uh, the information okay and just one thing uh, it will be good when you go to your MySQL right and under okay under the <coughs> under the inbound all right under the inbound okay I think it will be good to choose uh, inbound rules okay so i think you should make it as liberal as possible yeah to anywhere all right anywhere ipv4 okay so that uh because we do not know what is the ip that's assigned to an instance so if there is a fixed range then your uh your ec2 instance might not have access to your database so just make just change it to anywhere all right Okay, save rules. Okay, so let's try refresh. Yep, it's working. How about the other one? No SQL. Also working. All right. Okay, so now let's take a look what we have done. So we have spin up the AWS EC2 instance. We have deployed Node.js to AWS EC2 instance. So the next thing is uh, we want we want to get a customized domain name to point to the EC2 instance. All right. Okay. So instead of the IP address over here with the ugly port number, we want to have a beautiful domain name. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go and get an elastic IP. Okay. Because uh, currently, if I were to stop or reboot this instant then basically the IP is going to change and therefore if I've met my domain name to, a, to an IP and that later on the IP change then basically I'm going to uh, get some error so let's go to elastic IP okay then let's allocate elastic IP address 
okay and then let's click on allocate okay so this is the IP and let's associate this IP address with our instant okay all right so the instant is this one that's running and then uh, okay let's just put the same okay so we want to have this flex flexibility so associate all right so now the IP is okay so now the IP is this one so let's try out instead of the old one Yep, so it's working. And then the other endpoint, MySQL. All right, so now that we have used this Elastic IP, so in future, when we uh, stop this instant from running to save cost, uh, we are still able to access back the instant with this IP, right? So this is something like a fixed IP that is tied to this instant okay so uh, the other thing is that when we run okay so let's try to connect again Okay, let's change the IP now to the fixed IP. Everything is the same. So now, okay, instead of us using node to run our program i think it's a better I idea to use uh, a particular node.js module called process manager 2 all right so that has a lot of advantages so let's go and install it okay globally pm2 okay so it's installed so let's try to use pm2 to, to start our server.js all right so in this way uh, it is running right you can see here okay so that's good Okay, and whenever you want to stop you can just put pm2 stop by the id okay zero stop it okay so yes stop refresh so we are using the pm2 to, to start our server.js so it's running now so let's refresh right so it's working so we want to auto start this process so that uh, in any case when our EC2 uh, undergoes a reboot then we want the node uh, PM2 to continue to run the node application okay so what we can do is we can save this state and then after that we can generate the startup script for this particular user which is ec2-user alright then what we do is we copy this this command okay right click okay to paste into this file so that in future when we when we restart or we stop or we 
start again or we reboot this instant then the PM2 will run again all right what we want to do is we want uh, we do not want to access via port 3000 uh, we are going to use the engine X as a reverse uh, proxy all right so let's go ahead and install engine X Okay, and let's go ahead and enable engine X. Okay, so we want to enable engine X as a service. Okay, let's check the status. Right, so currently it's, it's already running. Okay, and now uh, we are going to uh, to go and edit uh, one of the configuration file of Engine X. So let's try to edit the Engine X configuration file. So here I'm using VI. So the path is etc slash Engine X slash engine x dot c o n f configuration file okay so let's press i to ins go into the insert mode so let's go all the way down to here okay and under the location location here Location, location for all the path. I'm going to use proxy path HTTP one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one. 3000 okay something like that okay and later on we will be doing for the HTTPS okay so escape colon right Okay, so let's try to reload engine X. So sudo system control reload engine X. Okay, so now let's try without. Right, so now it's without the port number, so no SQL and my SQL. Oh, okay. What's wrong with this? Try again. No SQL. So this working. So let me check the path. Ah, okay so let me try to stop again because I changed the endpoint earlier on so I think the endpoint yeah okay, let me just stop it and then just start again okay it should be working now so this no SQL and this is my SQL yeah so it's working 
right so the next thing is I want to uh, point my domain name to here all right so right so this is my web hosting company I'm using just host right so uh, this is the domain name that I have so now I want to point to the instant all right so I'm going to the so I'm going to copy okay copy this IP address okay I'm going to edit it okay change to this IP address so this will put four hours save and then for this domain triple W same thing okay save and finally to this naked domain name all right and save okay so what we can do now is we can uh, we can go to the DNS checker right and we can key in this domain name and search right and see uh, how fast the changes will be resolved right so uh, sometimes it may take a few hours sometimes it may take longer than that all right okay so uh, here we can see that the changes have been propagated throughout the internet right so this is MySQL and then this is no SQL all right so now uh, let's look at so the last thing is uh, we want to be uh, Google search engine friendly and also uh, to so-called to let the customer have confidence for them to use HTTP as secure all right so uh, the next step is to get uh, a certificate right so now uh, let's we need to make some changes to our program so let's open up server.js Okay, so this server.js and what we want to do is uh, we want to point to a static folder all right so I'm going to put app dot use and then express dot static and then we are going to use this folder public all right okay so it's auto save and you should see the status here this file will automatically upload to the server all right so over here let's create a folder uh, let's create a folder let's call it public okay and inside this folder let's double click okay let's create a text file let's call it tem.txt okay and let's just open it okay let's just put testing all right save it then uh, the text file will upload Okay, so it's done so let's try out all right so let's try out tem.txt to see whether can we get the file uh, okay we can oh okay that's because we didn't restart our program okay so pm2 stop server.js okay so let's start again server.js okay so let's try again 
yeah okay so that means now we can reach the static files which is needed for uploading our certificate so right now uh, <clears throat> okay uh, you should go to this particular uh, web app okay known as zero SSL so I've already signed up uh, as a new user right okay so let's go to dashboard okay so uh, okay let me just log out first and sign in as another user <coughs> all right so new certificate okay so the domain okay the domain is sg interactive studio.com okay next step okay so uh, we do want i mean i do want to pay so i'm using the 90 day certificate next step okay so uh, we can choose this one uh, is just to fill up some information okay to save time next step Okay, so <coughs> under the free account, uh, we can have three 90 day certificates. Okay, so I'm choosing this one. <coughs> Next step. Right, so there are a few ways for them to verify whether do you own the domain, right? So this will be the easiest HTT file, HTTP file up upload okay so let's download this file okay <clears throat> so save this file okay so let's go and find this file all right okay then let's go and create these two uh, folder all right so this two folder let's copy it so let's go back to our terminal here so within public, let's create a more folder. Uh, this will be well known. Click OK. And then <clears throat> inside the well known, create another folder. So this will be PKI dash validation. Click OK. All right. And then let's go into this folder here. And let's drop that file. Okay, the file for the zero SSL to verify our domain. Hmm, okay. So uh, we can we can open in a new tab to see whether can we access a file. Yes we can access so it's good to go. So we can click on next step. Okay verify domain. So if everything goes well then basically now yeah congratulations your domains have been verified right so now we can download uh, this certificate okay so let's let's download the certificate so open right so this is the the certificate so extract all right so these are the three certificates that we need all right so now let's move back to our terminal okay so let's move to so uh, let's traverse up and now uh, we will just drop the tree certi certificate okay we just copy the tree certificate we will just drop it into here okay for the time bin right okay so now uh, we want to 
go to etc slash engine x okay let's list okay let's clear the screen okay let's list it all right so uh let's create a folder okay give me a moment So now we are at engine X. Uh, I don't think we have the permission to create folders here. So I'm going to uh, change to the super user. All right. So I'm going to create a folder called SSL. And then I'm, I'm going to cop, I'm going to move, okay, uh, these three files into this folder. All right. So move from home slash ec2 dash user slash ca underscore bundle dot crt. Okay, so I'm going to move to uh, slash SS, ssl. Okay, so move second file. Second file will be the ca. No, certificate.crt certificate.crt and then the third file will be private.key okay so refresh here these three files should disappear so cd ssl right so we have these three files okay that's good so now let's try to change the configuration file again. Insert. So now let's move to um, here, right? Okay. So let's take away this one. Okay. So we want to listen. Listen. And then uh, the server name, okay, so we can put, okay, the server name, will be localhost, and then uh, the rest, okay, certificate. So it will be engine X, okay, SSL certificate dot CRT, and then the next one is the key. Engine X slash SSL private dot key. Yeah. Okay, and uh, basically we can uncomment all this. Okay, and yeah, we can uncomment all this. And then let's add in one location. Okay, and it will be proxy underscore HTTP localhost three thousand. Right. Okay. So uh, I think we need to uncomment this bracket here. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's try out. Okay, so we need to reload Nginx. So sudo system ctl reload nginx. Okay, so seems like we have an error. So yep, we have an error here and Okay, I forgotten the semicolon. Yep. So over here, semicolon. So let's try again. Okay, let's reload nginx. Oh, another error. Okay. So uh, I realized what is uh, the other problem is that there, there was a line here, right, that says SSL uh, something profile sy system. Okay, so what you can do is you can comment away the line or you can delete away the line. All right. Okay, then what you can do now is to just reload your engine X. Okay, and now we can try out HTTPS NG Interactive Studio. Yep, yeah, so remember we do have no SQL. Okay, it's working, and my SQL, so it's also working, right? So now there is a legitimate certificate, the site is secure right so that will give confidence to your customer so now if we put to http uh, it will still work right so what we want to do now is we want to uh, serve only https okay so for that we can go back to our engine x configuration file okay let's go to insert mode and let's go to the HTTP here alright and we want to do a redirect <coughs> okay so we want to do a redirect so over here Okay, so what we do is we want to return with a redirect to HTTPS, the host name, okay, so this line. So let's save it, reload the Nginx. Okay, and let's refresh it. Yeah, so you can see that even though I started off with HTTP, but it's uh, so-called redirecting to HTTPS. Okay, so everything is good. All right, so uh, we have done all the six items, and I hope you find this tutorial useful. So thank you for watching.